okay, I know people. Hey, I got something to say. You're like, what? You're not going live. It's recorded. Well, we have a special guest and we weren't able to make it happen on the date. So Roxy and I recorded it. So we'll put it live for you. But before I bring her on, let me tell you a little bit about Roxy Monroe. She's the author illustrator of more than 45 award-winning nonfiction concept books for children, 45. She has also had 14 New Yorker magazine covers published, created 12 interactive game apps, and has worked in numerous private, corporate, and public art collections. She speaks widely at conferences, workshops, and does school and library visits. Roxy, I'm so happy you're here. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I've been watching some of your programs and they're really cool. You cover such a variety of subjects with so many kind of cool people. <laughs> I think, and I love first, Roxy, you are my first children's book author illustrator ever. And I've wow. been doing it for years. And I saw your stuff and I was so impressed. And who was it that referred us? Somebody that we both know. Uh, John Higgins. Yeah. The, the, tra the travel guy. Yeah. yeah. John, the I love travel that. guy. I went to New York to see him and have dinner. He's a who. I love that dude. So shout out to He's John. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. So let's just dive into a little bit about you and how you got where you are. So do you live right in? The heart of Manhattan? Where do you live, Roxy? Yes, I live in uh, Murray Hill at Park and 35th. I can look out of the uh, window and see the um, Chrysler Building and Grand Central, which is great for travel because I could just, you know, bop in there and go to the airports or the subway. Uh, my studio is in Long Island City where I am now. This is part of my studio. You can see it. I have Whoa. a <laughs> Wait, it's so neat and organized. <laughs> Um, well, it's easy enough to just clean. Um, and I also have, there's a skylight up there, which is great for uh, that natural, even light, which is good for artists, of course. And um, so I just come here every day. I'm rather uh, predictable, nine to five. <laughs> and oh. then on Saturdays, a lot of people think that artists just, you know, when they get an inspiration, they just uh, like run over and start doing art. Or I mean, if they're not in the mood, they don't show up. No, no, no. You have to like show up every day and the inspiration will come. <laughs> you know, they say that about writing. You know, when I wrote my first few books and they're nonfiction. So, you know, it's not like <laughs> it's months and years of writing. But somebody told me, just put a few words on the paper. And then just see what comes. Sometimes it's just going to be a brain drain or scribble scrabble. And sometimes it's going to be words of wisdom. Is that what you do? You just. Start? Right. You have to, first of all, being an artist is at least 50% business. So I spend an enormous amount of time doing letters and emails and contracts and sales and marketing and all that jazz. Then I do a lot of research, mm -hmm. but also um, regarding the writing uh, thing you just mentioned, same thing with art. People say, very, very well-known writers say, just put your butt in a chair. <laughs> Don't be gross, but just sit down and do yeah. it. And you're right. Even if you, my sister, who's a professional artist, told me this once, and it's been very helpful. She said, you're not, you're not in the flow or the mood when you start. Just say to yourself, I'm going to go and just paint that chimney or paint like the ear on the person or something. And then if you get after about 10 or 20 minutes, you get into the flow, whether you like it or realize it or not. So you have to get that initial thing going. And the thing is to do it in little bits, as you said. Don't intimidate yeah. yourself and say, I have to finish. Like I just personally, I just finished this four foot, huge four foot painting. And I just said to myself, because it was hard, just yeah. um, do two windows today or just do the, just paint that red that corner in red like three inches of it and soon after a while you're like hmm, it's 50 percent done and then it's 80 percent done and then it's 95 percent done and one day it's done <laughs> so that's Wrong. the way to get going <laughs> yeah you know what your pearls of wisdom can be used for so many aspects of life 
I think about that. No, because it's the same thing with anybody who's an artist or working on anything they really want to do. A lot of times they quit because it's so overwhelming and they don't know where to start. But I do the same thing as you do. Even when I'm creating my journals, you know, I was laughing that it doesn't take them long, but it really does take me long. But I do just blocks at a time. Like here's the scribble scrabble part. There is a scribble scrabble. Here's the brain drain part. Here's the reset part. And that makes me feel like I have a sense of accomplishment every day. Also, the other thing you said for all my fitness fanatics out there, Mm -hmm. everyone thinks, oh, I just wake up and I can't wait to work out every day. Heck no. There's some days I don't want to do it. But once I get myself out, I say, all right, I'm just going to walk the dog or bike for five minutes. And most times what happens? Yeah. Yeah. You keep going. Right. Yeah. We keep going. And and I I mean, it's like a procrastination. It's the opposite of procrastination. I mean, we all procrastinate, but again, it's little, little bites, little chips at a time. And all of a sudden you've accomplished a lot. Yeah. All right. So 45, 40. (laughs) Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of nine to fibers. (laughs) Well, it takes about, um, it takes a while to, to pitch a book, as you probably know, and do the proposal and do the research. And then even when you get the contract, it takes me another six months to a year to physically do the book. And then it takes, by the way, as you know, also, it takes another year after you hand it into your publisher for them to edit it, design it, proofread it, send it, you know, scan the illustrations, send it to the printer. Mm -hmm. And then the printer has to ship the book back. So it's like another whole year after that, by which time you've forgotten you've written the book. (laughs) But um, anyway, it's it's, kind of nice to have a long-term process like that. I actually like, and also the collaboration, I've always been very much a loner, but I kind of enjoy the creative collaboration with the editor and the art director, which is kind of nice. They always have something, people say, well, what, when they ask for changes, does it irritate you or do you say no, or who's, or who's the boss, you know, you or the editor thing is 90% of the time they have good suggestions and you just dig in your heels and pick your battles. If yeah, you know, it's usually not a problem. I mean, I get along, I usually get the contract, get the, you know, like the giant assignment, get the contract and then they don't hear from me again for another six months or a year. I learned not to nickel and dime editors. That's not, yeah, that's not good true. for you. It's not good for them. Yeah. So, and you usually figure out what you're going to call or ask about. Given a few days, you kind of figure the problem out yourself. So, you know, too, that's too why long. I was so impressed with 45 because I know the process and it's a long time. You know, you're yeah. right. We're going to get it in another year. But I'm thinking your books have so much illustration that it seems to me that would take longer, you know, to make sure that it's exactly how your vision is and what they show you on the pages, because it's not just words, you know? Right. Um, Actually, I find writing much more difficult than the artwork. Now, both of them require research because I do nonfiction, also sometimes uh, interactive or concept books. Um, My nonfiction, they have to be accurate, including the illustrations. I can't fake it. You know, so um, but writing's the hard part, and editors often want me to because I'm a writer and an illustrator. Um, and most people who do books collaborate; writers collaborate with a different illustrator. But I do them both, which editors like because they only have one contract instead of two. <laughs> but um, I often um, oh, I, so I have to do all the writing first, which is hard. They prefer to do the writing first, then the editor wants to edit it. But I'm a visual thinker. So I have ah. to do the drawings first and the, the storyboard and the layouts. But then I um, write it and then I do the final illustrations, which I consider a reward for doing all that. You know, I mean, I love to do them, particularly with color and pattern. Um, a reward for doing all the research and the hard writing, because as you know, writing is rewriting. You, you have to, you might write something uh, one paragraph 10 times before you get it right or feel good about it. Yeah. So, all right. So, <laughs> and I love the way you're breaking it down because it really makes her, everyone out there realize how much goes into one book. 
you know, it's a lot. So how old were you when you started? Did you go to school for this? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. When, well, I mean, I come from a very, very creative family. My sister's a professional portrait artist down in Washington. Um, and um, so when I was six, we were always getting, uh, we were taken to museums from toddler as toddlers. We had art on our walls and library mm. books. And But when I was six, I won a countywide first prize for <laughs> a painting of a bowl of fruit. And it was my picture was in the newspaper and I thought well, that's kind of cool I think I'll be an artist so ever since then I was like the class artist and most talented in the yearbook are all these things yeah. then I went to college for seven years four uni- four colleges and universities and then when I came out with a fine arts degree in graduate school in fine art I decided um I, I realized that being a painter particularly at that time I was also in the Washington DC area which you know, at that time it was all politics and journalism. So if you sit, went to these, I used to go to these Capitol Hill mixers and they'd say, you know, whose committee are you on? And, you know, are you a Democrat or Republican? And, or, you know, what subcommittee? And I go, I'm an artist. And there's blank look across people's faces. Now in New York, we're used to all this, but in Washington, it was kind of rare at the time. Oh, but, so I started, but I started doing um, editorial work for the Washington Post and Associated Press because I, you know, put had some drew some drawings in a bar and put them on the wall, and or I didn't, the owner did. And then the uh, AP ate drank there all the time, and they came in. They're like, "Let's have her do some work for her." Wow, news service. I'm like, okay. But then um, I started doing television courtroom art. And by the way, to go back to my sister, she, you know, was nominated for an Emmy for her work. So I mean, again, a whole family is because I think genetics are part of it, are craftsmen, artists. So I started doing courtroom work, and um, which is fun. I did the end of the Watergate trial and the Abscam trial and did it about five years. Then I used to start coming to New York, and I broke into the New York Times once because even in those days they had gatekeepers. Yeah. So I, I somehow snuck into the elevator, and I went up to the book review, and. The guy, got, the editor goes, well, I can't use you, but maybe the New Yorker can. And I thought, I never thought of the New Yorker. So anyhow, I went over there and that was a real process. You just left your portfolio and came back a week later. I lived in Washington, so I had to take, you know, six hours of training. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they bought the first drawing I ever gave them. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And then two or three years later, I sold a cover. And the day I sold the cover, and I was in Washington. I had a nice life. They I saw the cover on the train going back. We had the village. Remember the Village Voice? Oh. And they they would have ads for like um, subletting apartments. And I saw an apartment trade. Someone wanted to be in Washington for six months, and I thought, oh. great. So I traded my apartment with a woman up at Columbia. And the first day I moved to New York, I was like, this is my kind of town. I mean, I had no money. I was uh lived at one point in a, in a horrible place full of a, a lofty thing down in 8th Avenue in Chelsea with rats and roaches. And I was so happy. <laughs> I just love New York. Always have, always will. Oh, Roxy, <laughs> I have to have you back on for a longer interview. There is so <laughs> much to unpack there. And that's fascinating, even up till far you got it. But in making sure we stay with our time on uh, i just <laughs> it was fascinating there were rats but i was so happy <laughs> okay all right let me get my composure so i want you to dive in you mentioned a little bit but i, I want to make sure they understand that when you say you can't dive in. <laughs> dive in oh there you go i that we they understand that you said you have to fact check that you're not you're not just you know writing a child you know it's book that this has stuff in it you said I have to get the pictures right and I have to get the information right tell them a little bit more about that well all all my recent books for instance this diving coral reef book a book just coming out on lizards these are just the proofs we need Um, to hold it up a little bit show the diving oh, oh dive in right so all of these books Dive in. Um, have to be 
vetted and they are actually my books are actually vetted by professors or specialists uh, the dinosaur I have a dinosaur book that was vetted by a guy at um in at uh, Ohio University got people at the uh, Natural History Museum have vetted the, my snake book so because you don't want these are for young people and even though they're you know very vibrant and colorful and hopefully yeah. interesting and sometimes they have a game element like a maze or finding games but they still have to be accurate so um I don't want a fourth grade boy or you know some librarian from Boston writing me a letter after the books in print saying you know you made a mistake you said a hippopotamus was a rhinoceros or you didn't you know you left a zero off how many millions of years the dinosaurs have been around so these oh are vetted, yeah. Yeah. yeah so they're vetted not only by me and then I my husband's my first reader but the editor then a copy editor a proofreader the art director and um and then we package that up and send the um, proofs to a professional mm. whom we pay a consultant which is usually a scientist if it's a science book mm. and they um sign off on it and I almost never have to change anything one time I had a claw and I had to like turn the claw a little way and one time I did a snake with too many um you know layer uh too many rows <laughs> but other than that it's I try not to have to screw up and have to redo the drawings <laughs> I had no idea <laughs> Yeah, but not all books are like that, right? No, you know, no. This is an educational and fun and beautiful interactive book. So Correct. are they are they using your books in schools? Yes, I have a I'm quite uh I'm like, I'm like a cult figure. So many um, people, trade books are the books that are in Barnes and Noble and bookstores, which I have. Some of my books are in Barnes and Noble and have been for okay. years. I've done signings there. But most of my market is what we call the institutional market, which is libraries and schools, which mm. makes me very happy. And I go visit schools and visit libraries and go to conferences. And it's, it's, a, lot, it's, it's a wonderful world. And most of my colleagues are just lovely, lovely people. We all know each other. It's oh. not one time I was at a cocktail party with all kinds of writers and, you know, they were grumping about each other, being jealous and stuff like that. And someone said, yeah, you know, adult publishing, it's dog eat dog, but in children's publishing, it's bunny eat bunny, you know? <laughs> and someone said, that's because the spoils are so small. <laughs> oh, my God. Or so, it just anyway. attracts a different kind of person. Right. All right, Roxy, can we see even just one or two of your books, like really see it, even if we don't have to go through the whole thing, but I want them to really get a visual here. Okay, well, I think, well, why don't we look at um, Anteaters, Bats, and Boas. Uh, right now, I'm kind of getting engaged more in think, political things like global warming. This book, oh. just, wait, this is a book of a series coming out from Holiday House called Books for a Better Earth. And this has things, desert habit, habitats and how to save them. So, I mean, I'm not a, a big, uh, I don't push it a lot. Most of the books are just done for information, but we do have issues with, as you know, the rainforest, deserts, yeah. polar systems, yeah. global warming. So this is great fun. And each page in this book, you have this, in, you have, um, I have a introduction. And then each page, you see this tail, this yeah, flows yeah. into the next one. And here you see this um, this windy thing, and here's this guy and the different creatures in here. So this is the tail of this. So it, it fits together like a puzzle in the end, you'll see. And then, this is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Then in the end, um, not me. Okay, so these animals are all real size. So they, you know, they shelled out for a big spread here. The wow. publisher did, which is great. That's awesome. That's a giant ant eater. And then you go through the whole book. And there's my personal favorite is this guy. Oh, my God. And then at the end of the book, you're flying above it all. And then there's you, everything in that book, your path, all these connect like a picture, like mm -hmm. a jigsaw puzzle. And then... You've got the different animals, um, mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, insects. I can't pronounce things, centipedes. 
Then you have, this is called back matter. And in my books and many, uh, now it's kind of important, even in some fiction books, they have back matter, which librarians mm. love. So more layers of rainforest, preserving rainforest, um, a glossary of words, children should know how to learn more, an index, and then even the end papers are maps of where you would find rainforest. This, uh, and the four week book is very mm. similar. So. And, and some of my mm -hmm. books, um, I did a book on snakes where you just saw the uh, patterns on the um, scales and skin, and you had to guess what kind of snake it is by some other information. And another book on birds where you just saw the eggs and you had to guess. So a lot of my books have a, are not only interactive, but they have a twist to them. I mean, mm -hmm. I did a book on maize, like where does food come from? And, you know, farms and land and food. You can really think of it like a maze. And much of the world's a maze when I think about it. Grand Central's a maze. Macy's is a maze. <laughs> Roxy. <Spooky> mazes. <laughs> First of all, they're stunning. I, I got to get some. I, <laughs> I just love them. I, I want them sitting here on my desk, number <laughs> one. But number two, all the detail that you put in them, oh my goodness. I find it so fascinating. And you must never get bored because researching all those topics, oh my God, and meeting all those people that are the experts. Right. I would love that. I mean, I can't draw, but I would love that part. <laughs> yeah, it has the, creating a book like books like these do have a lot of variety. As I said, you're alone a lot when you're doing all the work. But you're also engaging in people, not only the people who produce it, the publishers and the editors and the librarians. And then after the book comes out, you know, you're sprung into the world and you go to schools and talk to young children. And let me tell you something. Children appreciate beauty. I don't I don't talk down to them visually and do things really yeah. simple and cartoony. I'm, and I've had children and they brought tears to my eyes. One class, I had a third grade class, and after my talk, we have Q&A, and then it gets cut off, like 15 minutes, and the teacher says, okay. So afterward, after one class, a little girl came up to me, and her teacher was with her, and the teacher said, you didn't, you didn't um, call on Ellen, and she had a question for you, and I said, sorry, Ellen, you know, what was your question? I thought she'd ask about the animals, and yeah. which is mostly what people ask about, and she said, how do you make them so pretty? Oh, I just, you know, I, I was like, that's the point. Children understand beauty. I mean, I don't like do something where each tree is identical. I make each one separate because that's the way real life is, you know? I do, Roxy. I do. I just want to squeeze your cheeks. All right. <laughs> Anyhow. Okay. We're running out of time here and I didn't even get in any of the questions. So I got a couple of questions that we got to get in. And for those okay. of you who... So I didn't get to your questions. It's cool. We'll let you know how neat Roxy afterwards and you can ask some of her questions. Okay. The biggest one I got a bunch of times is, did you ever complete a book and go no way, no how and trash it and start over? They want to know you were like, oh my God, I just do not like this. You don't trash a book, but you trash ideas. I have these flat files over there. And, but I, so I have, Failed ideas where I have uh, submitted uh, certain projects to publishers and gotten rejected. Sometimes the book stays rejected forever. And again, it's a dummy. I, I do a, a, some degree of research. It's a concept that what's getting rejected is the concept or the idea, not me necessarily or my style, I hope. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you this book, this book, which I love and adore, um, was rejected out of hand. I did I did a dummy about 12 years ago. I stuck it in my flat file over there and it got rejected. Oh, I had an agent for this. I usually don't have an agent, but I had an agent for this. They couldn't sell it. I couldn't sell it. It sat there. My regular publisher was not interested. It sat there for 10 years. And about four years ago, I pulled it out and I cold called it or cold emailed another publisher. And they loved it and they published it and I'm crazy about it. And even they even sprung in the back for a big, which is expensive to print, a big poster. 
um, that it could, you know, big poster that kids can color in one side of or put on your wall. But so that's kind of a, a don't ever give up. And yes, you do do dumb ideas, but sometimes, and I say this to young children who write, you, everyone think you know, when you're young and naive, you think that you write something that's brilliant, but again, you go back, back and look at it in two weeks and it's going to, you're going to find out you could rewrite it better. So that's why writing is rewriting. Um, so I actually did revise this a little bit. And sometimes it's just one thing that you might look at five years later and there's a key and then unlocks it. And all of a sudden you're like, that'll pull it together. So, but I've got plenty of rejected things, not to worry. <laughs> well, that leads me into this question, which is they want to know how you handle rejection. And I love the fact that when I was asking you, you know, what did you want to get out to women of the world? You were saying that you have to be confident enough. I love this to accept rejection. Right. You, you have to. Yeah. And I've often thought um, I remember that my parents were very good about that. I mean, we were encouraged to nowadays kids don't want to be different. And of course, social media has made this much, much more, much, much worse. But, you know, you're encouraged to be like your peers or you're not, you're not encouraged, but hmm. it's inculcated into children. Now you want to be kind of alike or you want to be accepted. And my family, we're, we're like, it's cool to be different, you know, be odd, be strange, you know. Um, so, awesome. so to go back to the reject, but to go back to the rejection thing, um, I mean, if you're rejected hundred percent of the time, year after year after year, that can be a little discouraging, but uh, one other way to handle it is to have alternatives. In other words, right now I have like three different projects out, not one, three. So gotcha. two of them get rejected or it, all three of them get rejected. You know, you have to have something else in the works. And also, the, you, I really get over things like that. I mean, and, I, you know, artists' financial lives are like this. That's always an issue. But um, you, you just have to uh, get over it fast. Don't dwell on it. And, and again, it's almost like acting when people get rejected from acting. Maybe they're supposed to be six feet tall and they're only five feet tall. Well, hey. You know, so yeah. it's not always about you or not always about me. It's about, and also it's the climate. I mean, trends come and go. One of my yeah. best-selling books and most famous award-winning book I ever did, the editor told me 15 years later, she said, in today's climate, that book never would have gotten published. What was that? So Which it's, is that? it's actually the, fir the first book I ever did, the Inside Outside Book of New York. Because uh -huh. uh, at that time it was, and I did a whole series afterwards, but the thing is, you have to be in the right place at the right time. And sometimes you can be very, very talented and have a brilliant idea. But maybe, but maybe someone did the same thing, by the way. A, a, a big book just came out because you don't know what's in the hopper in that two-year waiting period. Maybe I, I had an idea to do a book on the polar regions and still might. Um, and I have a certain format for the book. And the, within a week of handing it to the publisher, we found that one had just been published. But that had been in the works and I didn't know it. One very similar, almost the same yeah, time. Right, yeah, yeah. So you can't help that. So sometimes rejection has nothing to do with you and you just have to carry on. I, 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 I had people say to me, well, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to give it one shot. And I'm like, one shot? You know, it's like acting. You got to, go, you know, poor actors get rejected all the time. And yeah. they can't just go out and do one audition in their life. <laughs> yeah, one and done. That's it. I guess I wasn't going to do it. Oh my God. I wouldn't have done most of the things I've done in my life. Roxy, we have to have you back. You're awesome. You're awesome. I love your journey. Thank you for sharing just a little piece of your world. I find it fascinating. And not only that, I find that so much of your wisdom can be applied to so many aspects of life, so many aspects. Yeah. So, will you come back? Yes. And thank you so much for inviting me. This has just been very exciting. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm like, Rox is coming on, Rox. All right. Before we go, how can they find you? How can they get your books, your art, whatever it is? They didn't answer any of questions. How can they reach out to you? Um, just 
our, um, my website's the best way, including um, my contact uh, information on there. Um, RoxyMonroe.com, my, just my name, R-O-X-I-E, M-U-N-R-O, no E, <laughs> dot com. It's the Scottish spelling, not Marilyn Monroe spelling. Um, people spell it all different ways. But anyway, uh, yeah, just the website's fine. Great. And I will answer you for sure. And um, people have come to my studio. Sometimes school classes come. So if you're in the New York area, give me a email. <laughs> All right, Roxy Monroe, thank you so much. I'm glad we figured it out. Hey, I got something to say, people. Roxy had something to say. And don't you worry if this is not your platform for watching. I'm going to spread it on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We would both oh, wow. appreciate you sharing, liking, and rating it. And you know what I'm going to say. Until next time, toodles. Bye. Bye, Roxy. Thank you. Thank you.